Hi. Hi. Happy hump day. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Coast to Coast Conversations. We're so excited to have you here. We have an awesome guest joining us in just a few minutes who is really going to help get you through this Wednesday. And we're super excited to have you joining us today. Yes, we are certainly pumped. You know, we're going to start this morning or this morning. Gosh, I don't even know what time it is. I did not sleep. Just for all disclaimers, I've been up since about 2.30 this morning. So I did not go back to sleep. So okay. if I'm a little off, that's why. <laughs> that's the worst. I hate that. You can't fall back asleep. My I know. Right. I know. So we are going to start our broadcast today about hot topics. We have a few of them. And I just thought of another one that I just wanted to add in, in the beginning. Then, yeah. we, like I just said, we will have a guest join us in a little bit. Someone who's so phenomenal and such an inspiration to so many people out there and is helping other people grow their business, stay accountable, and is an incredible business coach and actually really entrepreneur coach and just incredible. And then we'll end with some Wild Wednesday moments as well too. So let's just jump on into it because we only have 30 minutes and it goes fast with the best. Yep, let's do it. First off topic, what is it? Yeah, so one of the things I was thinking about the other day was I talked to somebody last week, I think it was like on Friday, and we were talking about, you know, I think I forgot that came up like, oh gosh, thank goodness it's Friday. And it was a business conversation. And it just made me think about people that do that all the time. They're like, oh, well, it's Friday or looking forward towards Friday. And what does that say about you and your business? And if you like your job, you know, like if you call somebody and they're like, oh, you know, how's it going? Well, it's almost Friday. What does that say? I, I, I find it to be kind of ridiculous. You know, I know I just said happy hump day because it's middle of the week, but really, does that mean I don't want the week to continue? So what do you think about that, Candace? Well, I think people get into these ruts of, you know, just saying something to say something to make conversation. I mean, it's like that whole conversation, you know, when you walk into Target, what are you looking for today? Oh, nothing, nothing. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm not looking for anything, but you actually really are looking for something specific. So I think people just kind of get in that rut. But I, I mean, I got to tell you, I'm a business owner and I love my job and I love the people I do it with, but I still love the weekends. <laughs> 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 well, you know, then it comes also to this other piece as I was talking to my husband this morning and we were talking about something and I just said, gosh, the time days are going by so quickly, but so slowly at the same time. Yeah. And we're like, how is that even possible? He's like, because all you're doing, it's groundhog day. Okay. Every single day. And even though we get this opportunity to have different things happen throughout our day, it's really the same routine. Yeah. So it's difficult. And that's one of the things about COVID that's been kind of like, huh, you know, unless you're going back out and full out doing things and good for you. I personally am not. We're we're still kind of doing our quarantine thing. Yeah. You know? And that kind of leads us into our second hot topic, which is uh, kids and social media, because I think kids are actually even more on social media now because um, they're not able to interact as much socially with each other. And so I was telling you earlier, I saw this thing that, you know, someone was saying on Facebook, nowadays kids can just say, Alexa, play this song. But I know you remember when we were growing up, if you wanted to hear a certain song, you had to like call the radio station, be on hold for 30 minutes, request your song, and then wait for like an hour right by your boom box and record it the second it started, or you're not hearing that song. Yeah. <laughs> Like today's world with social media is so different for kids. Well, it also ties into, you know, so similarly to that, we were watching, we, we stream everything. So we don't have cable anymore. We stream 100% everything that we're doing. And mm -hmm. we got rid of this massive cable bill, which is amazing. And so we were watching something the other night and we're kind of out of Netflix shows to watch because this is what we've been doing. And so, like, you know, let's just watch the NBC app. So we got on there and there were commercials, the C word. And my husband was like, oh, man, I can't fast forward because you can't fast forward when you're streaming and there's commercials. And it dawned on me that my daughter will never really know what a commercial is. Yeah. Because she stream, we stream everything for her. It's Disney Plus or it's Netflix or it's whatever. If she is watching, she's streaming and she'll never know what a commercial is, which leads to the next piece. Our technology. How, babies. Right. But how will technology impact advertising? And oh, where we already have right, and so what's happening there with that is that we're being inundated yeah. with ads everywhere else that we look. So right now, if we said, you know, I've got my Facebook app open right now. If we talked right now about, let's talk about the most random thing. Think about like something super random. Let's talk about it, and let's see between now and the time of our end of our broadcast if I get an ad in my stream. What's the most yeah. random thing you think of? Um, I don't know, like toe fungus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Okay, so toe fungus is something I was always wondering about. Facebook, toe fungus, I wanna know if I'm gonna have it. Toe fungus, all right, so let's see. Let's see if this works. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna see how long it takes for toe fungus or something about toe fungus to show up in my newsfeed. It's minority. Right. If you remember right. that movie with Tom Cruise, it's honestly really scary. And this can lead us into a whole nother future episode conversation, but it's the reason that the news media has lost its mind also because everybody's after the click in order to raise the advertising rates. And that's why headlines don't match articles and clickbait exists. And it's, it's like this whole big down the rabbit hole disaster. So technology is fantastic in a lot of ways, but I think, you know, we're going to see the long-term effects in our children for sure in a few years. It's, it could be kind of scary. Well, not only, you know, so you talk about that. And for me, I think it's going to be long-term effect of fake news, or if you want to brand it like that, but the mental effect of what I like to call fake book. So where people now are always trying to keep up with the Joneses, you're seeing right. people post the best of themselves and people don't realize that, that people are posting the best of themselves on Facebook. How often do you see the, the bad things about someone posting it? You know, I'm not going to post a picture of myself when I'm like bawling because I can't take the stress of COVID anymore. Well, so, a lot of people yeah. do that. People either do the best of themselves or the worst of themselves. Like it's like the <laughs> horrible either way. Oh yeah. What's the girl's name? Um, she is so fun. Her name's Tiffany. She's a local blogger here. It's like keeping up with, uh, what's her name? And she does do some funny oh, things. Oh, Juggling the Jenkins. Oh yeah, Juggling the Jenkins. Yeah, so yeah. that is a, hilarious, right? Like super funny to watch that. But it takes a toll on your mental health. And we all know that mental health is something that is going to, can destroy every part of your life. And mm -hmm. right now I've talked to friends who are, you know, in really dark places really places where they're struggling to figure out what comes next, struggling to reinvent themselves because their industry is just shut down, yeah. struggling to reinvent themselves because they don't know how to make their job a virtual job. Right. They don't know how to evolve or they're afraid to evolve or they're, they're not sure what comes next. Right. And that is something that, you know, a lot of people can really understand and relate to. And which is why we wanted to have our next guest on. What a fantastic segue. Well, you know, do you want to introduce him? Yes. So joining us now, I'm just going to say Coach AK because I know how frustrating it is when people mess up your last name. <laughs> it's a quark or it just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> so I want to welcome Coach AK. We are so excited to have you here. You are a motivational, inspirational leader in the executive coaching field and you have such an awesome story to tell so we're really excited for, to have you join us today no pressure thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you jamie well, you so, super <laughs> so let's just start off with um birth okay <laughs> Well, that's easy. We've got 10 minutes talking about the whole story. Let's, Let's go. go a little bit far back because I think it really speaks to your story. You are a triplet, but talk about the birth order thing and how, how you kind of started off with your family. Yeah, I'm actually um, a triplet. I should say I live in the city and you might hear some stuff, but that's just how it is uh, in the COVID world. But uh, I'm sorry, I'm the youngest of six and I'm a triplet and I have a twin brother and uh, a twin sister. And I would say I'm six foot three, 235 pounds, and I'm the smallest in my family. So I've always had to like compete just a little bit. You are and tall glass of water. Huh? Tall glass of water. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you're not only, I think I read that you're not only the youngest triplet, but you're like the youngest sibling too, right? I am the youngest of the youngest. So. <laughs> Uh, I was having a conversation with somebody like the funny thing about being the youngest is, especially in a big family, like no matter what you do, you're always going to be seen as like the baby, right? So I'm lucky to, I'm lucky to speak around the world. Like I'm lucky I'm blessed. But when I go home, they're like, how do you speak? You can barely read. <laughs> so, like, they're like, and they're like, well, if you can do it, anybody can, right? So, <laughs> well, it's family you kind of always get that kind of, uh, 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 you're always just the baby in the family, no matter how old you get. Yeah, that's for sure. You can never outrun that birth order thing. 
Yeah, exactly. and siblings will never miss out on the chance to give you a hard time. Believe me. Exactly. As someone who's got two, an older and a younger, they're both just mean to me. Ruthless. Oh my God. <laughs> Classic middle child syndrome right there. <laughs> right there. Okay. So, AK, tell us about how you, well, first tell us about what you do for a living and then tell us how you got started doing that. Because I think it's so relevant for people right now. I know you went through a really rough patch and a lot of people feel like they're going through that right now as well. So I think your story really speaks to how people can get themselves out of where they are right now. You know, you know first and foremost, that question to me is always a, a difficult one because people ask you know, what do you do or who are you? And, you know, I do a lot of storytelling. And, you know, what I've realized is that you can't always judge a book by its cover, right? My whole life, all of my experiences have made me who I am today. But oftentimes when people are asking that question of who are you, they're like, well, just tell me chapter nine. Well, like chapter one through eight is just as important to who I am today. But for the purpose of, of this combo, um, you know, right now I do a lot of I do a lot of different things, but one of the things I do is I do business coaching and executive coaching. Um, I'm a speaker, but I also do you know education, neural consulting uh, in China. But I also want to mention that we live in a world where we define success based on the hours of nine to five, but we don't consider those other hours of the day. Right? right. And I think COVID has really helped us realize that. So I'm also a father. Um, I like to play Scrabble, but I can't really spell. Uh, I'm a competitive monopoly player. Uh, so that's a lot of the things. I was also a former professional athlete. So I'm still trying to get, you know, into fitness in this COVID world. So I do a lot of different things though, but mainly right now is a lot of executive coaching and business coaching. You say former athlete, like it was sort of a little thing, but you were actually like an Olympic athlete. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. yeah. So I did track and field and I was, a, I was a gangly kid growing up. I was not very athletic. Uh, but I went to the University of Oregon, I ran track and field, and then I ended up um, training for the Olympics in 2008 for the Beijing. And that story is kind of a, a sore subject because I originally qualified uh, and then kind of got sick, drank some water in Egypt, and I ended up actually watching the Olympic Games from home. So mm -hmm. I know that feeling of knowing how to, you had this dream that you wanted and then you're starting from the ground up again, right? And I've had a lot of those different stories, like how do you come from the rock bottom and how do you get back up to make a new? So for people out there that are feeling like they're really struggling right now, and there are so many people out there that are either out of a job or completely having to reinvent themselves or just are really feeling the weight of what's happening across the world, what types of things can you tell them to help kind of get them out of that funk? You know, I actually did a, a podcast episode this morning um, on how is your life trending? It's a pod daily podcast called uh, Mornings with Coach AK. And I was talking about how our lives are trending. And so for example, I play in the stocks a little bit, right? And you have these different types of traders. You have the day trader, you have the swing trader, you wanna you know, play it for the long haul. But I think when you're hit with adversity, we kind of play ourselves like day traders, right? We go up with all the ups and all the downs, right? And it's usually because we don't have a forward vision. We're just kind of being reactive to the day instead of proactive. Now, how does this look in practice? You know, um, imagine, you know, we all have, you know, I have a, a, a partner, right? And if I'm having a conversation with her and we're having a fight, for, for example, if I decide when this conversation is happening that I want to remember all of the negative things that happened, right? That is the current self that I'm bringing to that conversation, right? But if I decide, you know what? How about I think instead of the positive moments, right? The reason why I actually fell in love with this person to begin with, that will actually change how you are in the present moment, right? Our body and our minds want to confirm our behaviors and our actions. And so for us, what I tell people is like, I know this is a difficult time. I know it is. But at the same time, we can also think about what are some things that are on the positive, right? I get to spend more time with my family. I'm not spending two hours in traffic every day, potentially, if you are there, right? How can we start to think in the more positive? Because that's now going to control our actions as well. That's awesome. I honestly think sometimes 
the human nature is to lean towards the negative and you actually really have to be intentional exactly. about living in that moment. And it's something that's so simple, but so difficult, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, think about it. I mean, when we are not being intentional, here's an example, like 65% uh, of the population hits the snooze button every single morning, right? And of that 54, and of that 54% of the population, um, when they wake up, they usually have a feeling of either dread or not excited or anxiety. But what do we do the first thing in the morning for a lot of us? We were just talking about this in, in, the, in the pre was technology. We immediately go to our phone. Now, what happens is it's actually similar to playing the roulette wheel, right? Like gambling. Like you don't know what's going to happen. So when you pick up your phone, you don't know if you get an email that's going to say you won the lottery or you just lost your job. So we're actually playing reactive to the day, the first part of the morning, rather than saying, hey, how can I be intentional? How can I, you know, follow a morning routine? How can I bring positivity into my life? Because that will then create that domino effect, right? So I would say first and foremost, every day is a new day. How can we start our day with being in control of our day. And that's really why I started the podcast is because I wanna make sure if you're listening, this is 100% chance that it will be positive. We already know what's happening with the news. Don't let your day start off in the reactive state. So, okay, in addition to logging on to your podcast, which we know is a great way to start in the morning, what are some other things that you recommend people can do to start their day? You know, right. something that on the positive side, obviously one thing is like, don't pick up your damn phone. Oh, sorry if I said that offended somebody. But. <laughs> <laughs> but what else can they do to start off the day right? Right. I think there's a lot of things that we can do to start off the day right. One of them is have a plan in place. Because if you don't have a plan in place, then you're just going to be, like I use like Katy Perry, just a bag flowing in the wind, right? If you don't have a plan, you will be reactive and all the ups and all the downs are gonna affect you. So at least have a plan, a vision that you're trying to accomplish for the day. Um, two is what we've also realized is um, through studies is having a time-based um, objectives or deadlines, right? Because what ends up happening is we often, if we don't have a deadline in place, we will just let it linger on and linger on and linger on. But if we set a time-based deadline, even to say, I want to get this done through the end of the day, it would actually increase our chances of being productive. And I want to say this, though. When we usually think of productive, we only think about productivity in terms of work. But being productive can also be, I want to be productive with being intentional, you know, hanging out with my little girl. I want to be intentional about working out. I want to be intentional about recovery, right? So I want people to start also thinking about all holistically about their lives. Right. And not and realizing that our lives just aren't based on what we do between the hours of nine to five. And we also create our own lifestyle journey. Right. What what happiness is to you may be completely different than what's happiness to me. And the happier you will be is the more that you're in line with your passions, your desires and what you actually want, especially in this world. where Everybody's telling us, you know, really who and what to be that the hardest person to be is ourselves. I love that. And it also allows you to have little wins throughout the mm -hmm. day too, right? So when you plan for something and you time it out, you base it out, then you can have little wins and celebrate those little wins okay. versus just feeling completely bogged down from all this stuff to do. That's that's really great intentional advice of starting the day off right. I love it. Thanks for sharing that. And I think it also kind of jumps right into your, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff on your um, website and your videos about being unbranded, which I okay. love that. Can you tell people a little bit more about that? Yeah, I would say unbranded is the number one. I mean, this, this concept is really one of the, the number one problems in the world today. And what I mean is we put ourselves into these little boxes, right? Either I'm just a man or I'm, or I'm this, or I'm a Democrat or a Republican. Or I'm just, I'm just one thing not realizing that we have so many different layers to us. Now, uh, I remember I was having a conversation with an individual from, I'm an executive from Lyft. And I told him, <laughs> I was like, what would I do if I told you that Lyft sucks, right? He was like, oh my goodness. And what happened is he had so much identity to that individual one layer label, yeah. right? And not realizing that we have so many different layers. And why is this so important, especially right now? Like we have COVID. We have the protests that are happening around the country, 
right? And when you put yourselves on these labels of saying, I'm either a Republican or a Democrat, you're immediately putting yourselves in separation. Not realizing that maybe we can connect both on being parents or both being athletes or both yeah. sucking at Scrabble and not being able to spell, right? <laughs> But that's what I'm trying to talk about. I really travel around the world and help people identify the multiple different layers that make them who they are. It helps them realize, yes, you are more than just your job. It also helps you realize if you do lose your job, and I think this is a tip that I can give people, it is, for example, I'm in sales. I think Jamie's in sales, we're all in sales. Now that's just one label, but if we break down the skill sets of what sales is, right? You have to be a good communicator. You know how to find, you know, the competitive advantage. You know how to connect with people, right? If you break down the individual skill sets, you realize you can actually move yourself into different industries, right? Okay. You might realize a salesman is also very similar to an educator, a teacher, or also a negotiator. But it's because we put these top labels on us, we can't even see the expertise even within ourselves because we've boxed ourselves in. It's so true. And I really wonder, I mean, if that's, you know, we've become so divisive on so many levels and I wonder, you know, how much of a part of it that is. I mean, everybody, you know, puts these labels on each other where we're, we're looking for ways how, of how we're different rather than of how we're the same. Exactly. Yeah. You know, AK, you were talking earlier about planning your day, being intentional, all these things. And I will be the first to admit that I wake up, I have a plan. So I'm there. And then the day starts. <laughs> How soon do you look at your phone, though, when you wake up? Uh, I'm not actually that bad. I will look at it sometimes to see if there's a text message, make sure nothing happened overnight. But typically, I get right into routine, like getting my daughter ready for school and doing all these things. But one of the things that is huge, and I use this in my coaching as well, too, is that you can have the best plan out there. But if you don't stay on it or you're not holding yourself accountable – then that plan means nothing. And I know that you have this new venture now talking about the A word. Okay, <laughs> but help everybody understand what you're doing now to coach people through that because that really, honestly, when I'm coaching people and I'm working with them, I find that they may understand it. They may have a plan in place, but they're just not holding themselves accountable or they need someone to be like, what you, what you do it, right? Not yeah. that you're doing that. But you kind of are. So share with us what you're doing for that. People yeah, that. so I actually started a company within uh, in, in the COVID world called Mobile XA. So we're kind of like your personal accountability and, and business coaches, even though other people have come on that are interested for other things. Like, um, can we use this for our children to keep them accountable to homework and making sure that they, you know, do their chores? But, you know, what we've developed is a 12-point system that can actually help people be more productive and also earn more revenue. And, and some of that is one of the main concepts is it's there's a financial incentives, right? There actually turns on a reward sensor into our brain that if you add money into it, right, it actually changes the way and makes us more motivated. So for example, if you don't finish your high impact task, mainly we focus on the 80-20 Pareto principle, is they will be deducted $5. Now, Oftentimes, when we have our friends be an accountability partner, if we didn't do something, we felt like we had to go back and make them feel better. But it didn't really help our group business grow any faster. So, but when you're losing money, it then focuses on you like, I need to make that back up, right? And so we actually have coaches that will actually on our platform that will people come in and they'll identify their three high impact tasks of the day. And we will keep them accountable throughout the day. Uh, the reason what we've seen is extremely productive is we also use a holistic approach. So it's not only just about um, your work. It's also about what kind of habits do you want to build, right? And what we mean by habits is what you're talking about, Jamie, is you can put a plan in place, but sometimes it just falls off the rails. It's because of some of those micro decisions that we have each and every single day. Like, I know I want to do this, but let me just check this email for a moment. Right, and then what ends up happening? Do, 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 yeah. do, do. So by having these tasks by the end of the day, what we're really doing is reshaping habits and reshaping behaviors where it becomes automatic. I think, and too, you know, the whole I love that, and I think back to your initial point too of being intentional about what you're grateful for and the good things in your life, and really having to keep your mind set on that positive, proactive track. Exactly. Well, and especially in the entrepreneurship world, what we often do is our to-do list can go on forever. Yeah. 
And so when we have a plan in place, when we say it's your three high impact, what we end up doing is once you get your three high impact finished, you're done. But oftentimes as entrepreneurs, what do we do? We go to our fifth and our fourth yeah. and our fifth and our sixth and our seventh, and it actually leads into the other part of the day. But what we've seen is that when people are able to get their three done, it actually makes for a more relaxing weekend because they know, cool, I've done what I needed to do this week and I'm seeing the results rather than needing to just continue to do more and more and more. But the next part is that we also do, we also add in recovery. Like just with athletes, you also have to have a recovery task each and every single day because growth happens not just like this, like athletes, it is that trend, yeah. right? It's such an amazing concept. So we've got on the screen your website. Is that where people can learn more and connect with you to sign up for this accountability coaching? Is that where they can find out how they can, is that the best place for them to go? It actually is go to mobile XA, just M-O-B-I-L-E xa.com um or you can even just look on us on on social media and uh you know i started when when i first started and i'll give you a, an example uh, we had this writer that was on um is in the network and when she started there were these two books that she wanted to complete and it was taking her 16 months and within the first month the first 30 days she finished both of the books <laughs> in in I think it was like 17 days, right? Because most of it was just procrastination, yeah. right? And it was building on each other. When I first started, uh, I got 102 high impact tasks done and created two years of content in 30 days. Jeez. <laughs> I'm exhausted just even hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's amazing. That's, that's really incredible. Wow, that, I mean, that right there, is a testament to that it works. So, well, okay, I we could talk to you for hours. I actually love speaking with you. We are personal friends as well too. So, AK and I work together on different projects. We are personal friends, and it has just been honestly a pleasure to have you on this platform as well too and help share your story. Thank you. That was when Candace and I talked about doing this live stream. Our goal was to connect with people that we know, we like, and we trust and help them get their message out there. Yeah. So we are just so happy to share your message and let people know about what you're doing in the world, who you are, because you are making an impact. And we want that to be even broader than what it's already been. So thank you for being on with us today. We typically, um, we, let, we let it go a little bit longer because I was just absolutely fascinated. And so we end our shows with what we call Wow Wednesday information and things that are just make you go wow and say, you know, okay, I'm gonna think about things differently or wow, people are doing this or the positivity out there. So I'd love if you can stay on with us for a few more minutes as we share through some of those wows. Fantastic. And I actually had different ones I was gonna show, but based on our conversation just now, I wanted to kind of pivot. So one of the poems that I like to read in some of my sessions is about your cup. And you talked about what's the first thing that you do when you wake up in the morning. And most of us will have a cup of something, a cup of water, a cup of coffee, whatever it is. Or two and cups. So, what's that? Or two cups of coffee. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and the thing is that you're holding a cup of coffee when someone comes along and bumps you, right? So what spills out? Coffee. Coffee. No. Right? You would think it was that coffee was, right? But it's not what spills out. It's not your coffee that's spilling out. Everything else that's inside you is spilling out. So it says, you know, you're holding a cup of coffee when someone comes along and bumps into you, making you spill your coffee everywhere. The point is, whatever is inside that cup is what will spill out. So therefore, when life comes along and shakes you, which will happen, what is inside you will spill out. So is that resentment? Is that anger? Is that frustration? Are you spilling that out to the people that you're coming in contact with? Like looking at your phone first thing in the morning, getting a bad email, and then affecting everyone else in your house by being angry? Right. Or compassion, love, kindness? So not only is it about putting that phone down or putting down the things that bring you negativity early in the morning, when you readjust and evolve and figure out a new way to start your day with a positivity, everyone around you is impacted differently. From the people that live in your home, or if you live alone, it's from the people that you interact with on a Zoom call, or if you're driving down the road in traffic and you're in, you know, doing something like that, if somebody cuts you off, if you're in a good mood, it's not going to make you mad. But if they cut you off and you're not in a good mood, it's going to piss you off, right? <laughs> so I think that's a really important message for people just to start thinking about, you know, what's in your cup is always going to spill out. The last thing was is that you said, don't judge a book by its cover. 
And there was a really great post. There's a Facebook page. If you're not following it, you need to. It says good news during Corona uh, coronavirus concerns. And there's, oh my gosh, so many amazing stories on there. But there's this one picture and it said, um, a, do- a father told his daughter, don't tell anyone that your father is a janitor. They will laugh at you. So then she posted this picture. Let me go ahead and show you here. See if it works this week. <laughs> Last week it didn't want to work. One second. Oh, she doesn't have a Mac, so she may be experiencing some problems. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. There we go. Can you guys see it? Let me tell me when you can see it. Oh. See. Yeah. So then she posted this video on social networks and wrote, my dad is a janitor. He is my pride. I love you, dad. Oh, that's awesome. And it's so true that a lot of times we get in our own heads. We think that we aren't enough. We think that what we do isn't enough. We think that no one will be proud of us for what we're doing. And AK, one of the messages that you gave today, which I think is really profound, is that you're more than what you do from nine to five. It's a holistic approach about who you are as a person overall. You know, what does that mean for you as a father, as a mother, as a sister, as a brother, as a friend, as a teacher, as a colleague, as a neighbor, as a neighbor? Mm -hmm. What type of person are you? And more so today, it's important to be that kind person and realize that we all bring value every single day. We just have to look inside and be self-aware of what we're doing to bring that value. So I love what you're doing as your coach, bringing that for people, for those that are watching now live, for those that will be watching as the instant replay, (laughs) just think to yourself that every day if you come and fill your cup with kindness and love and positivity and an attitude of gratitude. We're coming on that in a few months. I won't tell you what, but there's a really cool thing coming in a few months on that one. But an attitude of gratitude, then everything will be better and everything will feel better. So that's all. And today's show on Candace, any last minute? Just just on that note, I think it's so important to who you surround yourself with, you know, and that's why I love what we're doing on these coast to coast conversations. We're bringing in amazing people doing amazing things that are just full of positivity and their cups are full with kindness and love and compassion and, you know, surround yourself with those people, delete those negative nillies off of your social media pages because it will suck you down and just really, you know, be with like-minded individuals. And I think it'll help a lot. Yeah. Unfollow those people. (laughs) Well, AK, thank you again so much. We are so grateful to have you on today. Stay on for a minute as we end our broadcast. We'll follow up with you in the backstage zone. Also, next week, we're super excited. We've got a great show as well, too. I believe next week we're talking about sandcastles, aren't we? Is next week Brian Wigglesworth? I think it is. We're a professional sandcastle maker. Pretty cool as we go into the Labor Day weekend. Maybe he'll give us some tips on how you can impress your fellow sand makers on the beach. Uh, also talking about some cool new tools and, and accessories for outside if you're going fishing or paddle boarding. So next week's going to be a really fun invention zone and creative zone on our Coast to Coast Conversations. For more information, go to our Facebook page if you wanted that. If you'd like to be a guest, we would love to hear from you. Just go ahead and send us a message either on Facebook or anywhere that you want uh, to find us. We're on LinkedIn. We are everywhere. You can connect with us. And that's about it. We're done. So until next time, from coast to coast, we will see you later. Bye, AK. Thank you. Thank you.